The coronavirus is spreading fast across the European Union. Cases are rising and amid the recent spike and the vaccine concerns, the EU held its virtual vaccine summit to address these concerns. In that crucial summit, leaders of 27 member states discussed possible measures to ramp up vaccination supply as well as inoculations across the bloc. During the meeting, the European Parliament President David Sassoli said that countries are going back into lockdowns and amid these times of crisis, we cannot afford to waste even a single dose of the vaccine. Deve esserci proporzionalità e reciprocità, ecco perché sono convinto che le disposizioni della Commissione vadano esattamente in questa direzione. Non possiamo permetterci di sprecare nemmeno un vaccino o di trasferire vaccini in paesi che non ne hanno bisogno e che magari hanno bisogno di vaccini per fare business. Questo non è il modo corretto per usare i vaccini. The EU chief Ursula von der Leyen tweeted the summit's agenda. Von der Leyen said that she has briefed leaders on the 77 million vaccine doses shipped as well as EU's current inoculation numbers. Another pressing issue the leaders debated on is EU's vaccine export ban. The summit comes as the member states remain divided over the European Commission's tough stance on vaccine exports. Before the virtual meet, leaders issued crucial statements on the union's vaccination drive. Speaking in the parliament, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel stressed on the need of vaccine production in Europe. What we can clearly see is British production facilities produce for Great Britain. The United States do not export and that's why we need to know what can be produced in Europe, especially as we have to assume that we will have to deal with the virus and all its mutations for a long time. That means this question goes well beyond this year. The European Union, United States and the UK approved their first vaccine around the same time. But EU's vaccine drive is lagging far behind. Less than 5% of the European Union's 450 million residents have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. We probably shot less for the stars in a way than some others. And I think that must be a lesson for ourselves. We were wrong to lack ambition. I was going to say the madness to say it is possible and we are going. We are too rational, perhaps. French President Emmanuel Macron expressed his frustration over the same. Macron said that the European leaders have been too timid. Not just that, several member countries have raised concerns regarding unequal vaccine distribution across the European Union. The Austrian Chancellor even went ahead to say that this disparity could cause the bloc great harm if not rectified. The word solidarity is always being called upon and used so often in the European Union. People are trying to take care of the whole world. And when member states have a lot less vaccines available to them than others, then I think this is a big issue for Europe. I would even go so far as to say that I think that when there is no solution, this could cause damage to the European Union like we haven't seen in a long time. A key highlight of the summit is the upcoming address by U.S. President Joe Biden. Biden is expected to speak in the next few hours. EU officials say that apart from the pandemic, the address will be an opportunity for the United States to improve its transatlantic relations, which soured under former President Donald Trump. Met with silence and spread unchecked. Our correspondent Lucy Hof joining us from Brussels for more on that. Lucy, already there have been widespread concerns about the uh, slow rollout of vaccines uh, within uh, the European Union. And now the tough uh, stance that's been taken by leaders, including Macron, uh, especially with regard to wastage of vaccines. 
Yeah, as you were hearing there, that sentiment from Emmanuel Macron that the European Union has been too timid, it's been too hesitant in its vaccine rollout and that it needs to have a rethink of its strategy based on what other countries, notably the US and the UK, are doing in terms of focusing on their own citizens first. And uh, the urgency really here in Europe could not be more critical as a third wave begins to tear its way across the continent, as uh, major economies go back into lockdown and as that vaccine rollout continues to experience uh, disruption not least to do with supply shortages, but also uh, slow bureaucratic processes at a national level. So there is a sense that the EU really needs to turn this around, facing pressure from European citizens. So in part, this is about getting tough on how much the bloc is exporting, making sure that European citizens aren't being left short uh, at, by the scale of the EU's export operation. We've got some updated figures today about exactly how many vaccines the bloc is exporting. We were told the figure was around 43 million officially, but we now understand it's more like 77 million since December. These are the, the figures that haven't had to have been officially recorded. So that's about half of the vaccines that are produced on this continent. Meanwhile, just a fraction of the EU's population of 450 million has received a dose. So while Europe grapples with this third wave, while it tries to prevent uh, that situation from spiraling by by increasing the rate of its vaccine rollout, uh, there is some tougher talk about getting on top of, of this uh, campaign. Indeed, if we just talk uh, the numbers and uh, the fast spread of the virus uh, in the European Union uh, and compare those figures uh, with the vaccination drive and how many have been inoculated, Lucy, there is a valid concern uh, that the EU does uh, need to... Uh, shape its drive in a way that it can contain the spread of the virus at the same time safeguard its population in a speedy manner uh, when you compare the numbers with other parts of the world uh, there is a strong concern There certainly is. I mean, the UK has vaccinated three times as many people as the EU. Uh, we're at uh, just under 40 percent of the population there who've received at least their first dose of the vaccine. That's more like uh, 10, uh, 12 percent here with just 4 percent who've been fully inoculated. So uh, just a fraction of what the UK has managed to do. Uh, the US has simply has also managed to, to turn its uh, trajectory around a lot and has drastically increased its rate of inoculation as well. So the EU certainly has some catching up to do. There is an interesting comparison to be drawn because effectively at the start of this process, the EU, which is a trading bloc, didn't really change its trading strategy. But what we had quietly in the United States or uh, very publicly under Donald Trump, but now less uh, publicly under Joe Biden, is a an American first policy, essentially restricting exports until uh, all US citizens who want to receive a dose have received one. We have a similar policy going on in the UK. Meanwhile, the EU has continued its role as a major manufacturing and distribution hub. And as such, it has exported perhaps more than it should have done in terms of uh, vaccinating its own citizens. But this new strategy of tighter controls is coming under some criticism. Certainly there's been criticism even from some EU national governments, from uh, former EU chiefs who say that this move is aggressive, it could uh, disrupt global supply chains and in the end uh, prolong the coronavirus pandemic if indeed other countries are affected uh, by these export controls. So it, it is a nuanced issue and certainly in the talks that are going on right at this moment there is division on the extent to which uh, these export controls should be executed. Right. Lucy, we're going to leave it there for the moment. Uh, but uh, coming back to you as and when we have further updates on the EU's uh, vaccine uh, tightening measures. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.